Right, okay. So, uh, so good morning. My name's Matt Dunn. I'm Head of Radiation Physics at, at Nottingham University Hospital at NHS Trust. Uh, and you'll notice on the bottom left hand side, I'm a medical physicist. So, uh, and I always ask people, what's your superpower? Okay, so, um, so we're based in Nottingham. So Nottingham sort of in the centre of the, the, the UK, about as far from the sea as you can get. Um, in the hospital, there's 17,000 staff. So it's like a small town. Uh, the budget is about 1.3 billion, which is a lot of money. Um, we have 1,700 beds uh, and there's 30 staff in radiation physics, which is my team. And you probably all know about Robin Hood in Nottingham. You're, is Robin Hood fam familiar to you? You all heard? You'd seen yes, 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 yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so we don't all dress in the green tights, by the way. That I should point that out. Okay. So um, so my talk is about um, about optimization and patient doses. So um, so why do we measure patient doses? Um, it's to understand the risks that, that patients are exposed to. So in Nottingham, there's about half a million examinations per year involving radiation of patients where we, where we irradiate them with X-rays or with uh, gamma rays or all sorts of things like that. Um, we do it to support optimization so we can keep the doses as low as possible uh, to reduce doses, as, you know, keep the safety, um, uh, you know, as good as possible. Uh, and that, that supports um, patient risk reduction and also staff, because in some cases the staff are exposed to the radiation as well. And we have to keep the regulators happy, so the legal requirements, that's that's basically the main motivations for doing it. Okay, so what sort of x-ray imaging modalities, and our hospital doesn't look like the pictures by the way, these are just from the brochures, so um, it's not quite as glamorous as it looks in those images, but We've got CT scanners, we've got interventional units for putting things like catheters in patients, we're doing uh, coronary artery studies. Uh, we do plain x-rays of people, you know, for when you've got broken bones, um, you know, chest x-rays, things like that. We've got mobile devices um, on the bottom right hand side. So we use those devices in theatres uh, when people are doing, for example, orthopaedic surgery um, and we support all those different um, modalities. Right, <clears throat> so if you want to uh, track patient doses to reduce the risk, uh, you need data. And actually, <laughs> I quite like this quote from Edwards Deming. So um, Edwards uh, Deming did, did the sort of, um, uh, you know, the sort of Toyota, um, you know, error reduction processes. Um, and you need data on your processes if you want to optimize them, if you want to make them better. So, um, so in God we trust, everybody else has to bring data. And for dose management, we need lots of data. Oops, sorry, the slide's clicking on. So we need lots of data. Okay, so how do we gather patient radiation doses from our patients? How do you do it? Well, th th there's different options. You can do, you can have paper forms. It's really time consuming and you don't get that much data. And there's probably a question mark about its quality. You can use the radiology information system, which is called the RIS, uh, generally call it a RIS, radiology information system. You get loads of data, uh, but there's transcription errors and it's often incomplete. You get coding errors where they code one examination as another. Um, it's sort of okay for monitoring patient radiation doses, but it's really poor for optimization because it doesn't tell you anything about the procedure. It just tells you the, the final outcome. Or you, you can use the system that we use, which is called dose management software. So um, it costs money, uh, which is obviously is a negative. Uh, it doesn't cover all the modalities, but the data is really big and really rich and really accurate because the users don't have any uh, involvement with it. So the, the, the machine just records all this data in the background and we get loads of really, really good data. So um, we did a study in Nottingham where we looked at when the users recorded data, and the data is recorded automatically by the IT systems, how accurate were the users uh, and, you know, their, their records. And basically, even if you allow them to make slight typographical errors in the in the data, you found that even if you allowed huge errors, so even if you allowed them a 20, 40, 60 percent uh, difference between the recorded value and the true value, they're still only getting 80 percent of it correct. So basically, user recorded data is pretty poor. Um, in, in general for monitoring patient doses. Okay, uh, you can use the median of all this uh, risk information, but it's limited and it tends to be a little bit biased. 
So scientifically, it's not that great. And it's not very rich in terms of information that you get. You just get one number for each examination. So it's really poor for working out what went wrong. So we use this system called patient dose management. So the system we've got is by GE Healthcare and it's called Dose Watch. What happens is all of the X-ray modalities, so CT scanners, interventional units, uh, mammography units, fluoroscopy units, they all send their information across to this huge database that we have that lives in the cloud somewhere. Uh, I don't know where it is. And then you get a web interface and it means that the medical physicists, the technologists, the administrators, the physicians, they all have access to this data on what's going on with the, the patient exposures. So how much data do we have? So um, this is a this is a picture of our mainframe. Well, not really, because they don't really look like that. <laughs> but um, basically, we've got stacks of data on, on examinations. So we've got 400,000 CT examinations, uh, 140,000 mammography, uh, uh, interventional and cardiac, 75,000 patient data points. And for, ra for radiology, radiography and fluoroscopy, there's 900,000. So we got 10,000 10, times more data than you get using the manual sort of, you know, paper sheets recording methods. And we get pretty much all of the data from all of the machines. OK, so I'm going to give you some examples of, uh, of how we monitor doses and how we optimize them. So this is a mammography unit. I don't know whether you're all familiar with mammography units. So they're used in breast screening to check for cancers. Um, and what happens is the, the patient's breast is placed on a table. There's a compression plate that comes down to squash it into nice uniform shape, uh, thin and uniform. So this is the paddle here that moves down. OK, you have an X-ray set at the top and it fires an X-ray beam and takes a picture of the breast through the, um, you know, through to a detector, which is usually digital on the far side. So that's that's the sort of technology that we're talking about. Um, so connected this system up to three of our rooms in Nottingham uh, and these are the doses so that so MGD is mean glandular dose so that's how much radiation uh, a typical breast got so um, you can see that the two G essential machines uh, gave around one milligray uh, and the room four is given about 1.5 so you can see that um, that particular room is given higher doses than the other two and we need to think about what we're going to do to bring those doses down. So uh, we use the, 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 the um, database system because typically people measure 50 uh, women's uh, breast doses every three years, which isn't really that much data. In Nottingham, we connect these machines up and we can do it almost daily. Uh, we can get the same data that they do every three years. We can do that in three mouse clicks using the automated system. OK, so what do you find when you do it so you, you gather all this data from all of these mammography exposures and we can use it to check how um compliant the operators are with the um with the settings that they're supposed to use for each patient so um you can see here um before we had the dose management system about 90 percent of the patients were using the correct protocol um there are a few occasions when you use a slightly different protocol uh, so 10% of the time, they were probably making roughly the wrong choice, around about 10%. And after we'd set up the system, tracked all the doses, tracked all the protocols and fed back to the users, you can see how we'd improve the protocol choice. So that's about 1% of the time they're actually using the, the wrong protocol on the, these particular machines. And that reduces the doses and improves the image quality uh, in mammography. So it, it means that you're likely to detect more cancers. Um, when you do mammography, you can vary the amount of compression that's used on each uh, each patient. Um, and if we looked at two different users in, in the center, one of the operators used relatively high compression force. So if you think about it, um, a compression force of 100 newtons is, a, is about 10 kilograms in terms of compression force, if you like. So operator H used very high levels of compression and operator a use very low levels of compression and actually the data allows us to um, look at the practice of the two people and give them feedback on their performance and, and how well they're doing um, and try and harmonize the practice between different operators so again having lots and lots of data is really good for that okay so uh, 
so how do we actually optimize the, the radiation doses to patients in, in imaging? We have a multidisciplinary team. Uh, so um, we have a radiologist or an image reporter, somebody that looks at the pictures at the end. We have an operator who operates the equipment, so a radiographer or a technologist, depending on your terminology, and in bold, because they're the most important person, obviously, is the medical physicist, okay? Uh, and some of you might notice that I've added a lady in there because uh, each of these roles could be either or. Um. Okay, so if we want to optimize the radiation exposures to patients, how could we actually do that? What do we actually think about when we're optimizing? So we might do a literature review of the, the image quality parameters that we want to set. We might look at practice variations between operators to try and remove them. We might do experiments, so we might have a physical phantom that simulates a patient. So I've got one here that we um, we have a phantom that looks like this, it's obviously not always lying down comfortably, but you can put them into different positions and you can test out your exposures. We can use Monte Carlo modeling. So what, what that does is tracks X-ray photons using a computer simulation to see uh, how you might get the best pictures um, from that process. We might use real patient images to look at the quality of them to give them some scoring. Um, we might look at the outputs from uh, images that we've taken of patients, so x-rays we've taken at patients, so we might do computer measurements of them, so the noise, the resolution, uh, the frequencies that are present, so um, a measure of resolution, a contrast to noise, a signal to noise. Um, we might do visual assessment of images, so observer studies, so you might get um, radiologists to score the images in terms of how how they like the pictures, can they see what they need to see, or e e the alternative is to use what's called a model observer. So we train a computer to look at images like a human would and give us a score based on what the computer thinks the image quality looks like. So we use those things to, um, to look at our images to see what is the best settings and, and get the lowest doses that we can for patients. Okay, so, um, so this is an example from CT. How do we optimize the exposure? So, on a CT scanner, if you can you see what this is a, a lateral view of a patient here. So you've got the head, teeth, they've got fillings in there. That's the neck and that's the shoulder region. Um, what happens with the X-ray set is where, where the body is sort of thicker and there's more tissue in the way, it tends to turn up the X-ray exposure to be higher. So this is across the sort of jaw region. It goes down for the neck because the neck is relatively thin. OK, and then it goes back up in the trunk of the body through the chest. So we can use a phantom in our um, CT scanners. So this is a phantom that we have in, in Nottingham. You put that in the scanner and you can see what the machine delivers for each of these uh, annuluses of, of perspex they're actually made of. We can use it to test out the scanner to see how it's performing and to change the um, change the settings. OK. Um, so you can do that on the different scanners and you can measure radiation doses that each of the different machines is given. I'm not going to go through the details. You can see here on this data that one of the scanners is given 691 units of radiation dose and the best one is given 284. So we can optimize those scanners to give the same performance. OK, so how do we op optimize X-ray exposures? So if you think of about something simple like a radiography hand, so you've fallen over and hurt your hand, um, we, can, we can change parameters on the set, like the tube filtration, so how, how much the low energy x-rays are filtered out from the x-ray beam. We can change the tube voltage that determines how penetrating the beam is. We can choose how many x-rays actually go through the patient. Uh, we can choose the beam area, so how much, uh, you know, what sort of size of an image we're looking at. And then we can play around with the image processing. So smoothing, edge enhancement, brightness, contrast. If you think about your mobile phones, all the things you can do to make your photographs look better, we tend to do with um, X-ray imaging. OK, so all those things we can we can optimize on our patients. Right, I'm going to skip the next couple of slides. Um, what I would say is if for those of you that are perhaps considering a career in medical physics, definitely get involved and, and definitely make a difference. It makes a huge difference to um, the quality of, of uh, imaging within hospitals and reduce, you can reduce the radiation doses quite massively. And in the interest of time, I'm going to stop talking now and give you the chance to ask some questions.